All right, Gus, you uh, you ready for this hot uh, I'm ready. action? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Three, two, one, go. And uh, hi, everybody from Upsurge. This is Travesty. I'm joined here by Gus. We're 20 minutes into a game, just in the prime time for all the action. We wanted to join in when all the items were completed, and uh, we're in UCL <laughs> semifinals. Yeah, uh, we had a little bit of technical and personnel difficulties going on tonight, so mm -hmm. at least we're able to get into game one, and we'll be able to see it. Uh, so, Travis, whenever you're ready to go, I'm ready. Yeah, I mean, I'm already in here. We're partying hard. Um, we, I just saw the blue turret get destroyed down low. And oh, you need to give me a timestamp. Then yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta, we gotta time ourselves here because we have to join into this late. Twenty-one twenty-five. Tell me when you're there, buddy. All right, working on it. He's working on it, guys. Give him a second. He's nervous. Yeah, you know? spec spectator client is very finicky. All right, I'm there, and Leeson is fighting Morgana. Okay. Yep. 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 So I'm gonna give us go. Three, two, one. Go. All right, hey, look, there we go. Lee Sin's fighting Morgana. That is the shackles that are going to be laid down. That's a flash cupcake. That's not going to be able to get there, but it's going to be eternal darkness for Lee Sin. He is blinded already, and Fred picks up the kill on the backside. Yeah, a good black shield from Q there made sure that the Dragon's Rage did not actually knock the Morgana away. It meant that there was no Dragon's Rage to kick the Nocturne away, and even then the Ace in the Hole found the kill. So... You know, Lee Sin, it, you look at his scoreline 142, I was spectating for a few minutes before we started going on here, and uh, a couple of fights in the bottom side and around the Dragon really swapped the game away from Purdue here, so Maelstrom looking like they're, they're in a good position to try and pick up this game one here in the semifinals best of five. Yeah, absolutely, man. This is one of the few scenarios where you see a Dragon Rage and Lee... League of Legends do 40 HP damage. He's pretty far behind at this point in time <laughs> and not really going to be able to do too terribly much. But hey, you got to look at this composition. This is a composition that can scale and they are not as terribly far behind as you would want, like where you could just say, ah, oh, the game is over. They do have scaling options in th all three of their lanes. Yeah, I mean, Sion will become a huge tank and a big problem. He is down quite a bit of CS, especially compared to the rest of his team. But you have Ryze and Sivir, who can just wave clear for days. Obviously, the Sivir 500 CS win condition is always a thing. She doesn't have Infinity Edge just yet. When she does get Infinity Edge, she'll be doing a lot more damage. Um, Caitlyn went for the Storm Razor Infinity Edge build, along with a couple Dorn's Blades, but... You know, six item Sivir, six item Caitlyn, both very scary. So kind of even there. Then Rise versus Orianna is somewhat even, depending on how good of a shockwave Chuck T can land there. Um, so at this point, he is two zero and six. Looks like he's doing what he needs to do to become the threatening Orianna presence later on. And then at this point, Lee Sin is kind of just a kick machine. It's going to come down to whether or not he can land a very good kick later on in the game or maybe land a, a Baron Steel or a Dragon Steel or something. Because with his items at this point in the game and his scoreline, the Lee Sin's not going to be contributing a whole lot mm -hmm. other than that. So mm -hmm. he's definitely got to be the wily Lee Sin, figure out a way to be useful without uh, just one-shotting people. Mm -hmm. So... We'll see if he's able to pull that off or not as another dragon went down. Another Cloud Drake did not give the soul. So, we unfortunately, uh, spectator mode doesn't show us how many dragons each team has anymore. Yeah, which is unfortunate. And I, don't even, I don't even think you can click on them and see anymore. I'm yeah. not seeing it. So, we don't know how many dragons they have, but it is a Cloud, cloud Rift. So, we're close to the soul at the very least. Mm hmm absolutely and we do have to keep an eye on things like you were talking about the lee sin and at the very beginning of the game you look at him being much more of the sword for your team and then right now at this point in time when you fall behind you have to turn around you have to adapt and you have to become the shield so it's going to be a situation to see what they'll be able to do with that while they are behind currently right now no team really getting any proactivity the ward coverage is actually a very interesting thing to take note of here yeah and you know you can with this ward coverage, it definitely makes it easier to find people caught out, especially when you have the Morgana on your team. 
So for the side of Maelstrom, it's definitely key to make sure that they have these pockets of darkness to work with because not only do you have Nocturnal to catch them out, but you have the Morgana Snare, Orianna Shockwave coming to catch them out. If Renekton's hiding in a bush, he can do a lot of damage with how strong he is with 3L1 with a Black Cleaver and a Sterex Gauge. So that's kind of the name of the game for Maelstrom at this point is find outnumbered fights or find a 1v1 and send Nocturne in on them or have Morgana catch someone out. And for the side of Purdue at this point, they kind of need to group up, which is always dangerous against Morgana and Orianna because of the AoE potential that they have. So, you know, it, definitely for the side of Purdue, they want to sit back and scale up and let the Sivir and Rise become the late game powerhouses that they uh, can be. And for the side of Maelstrom, they just need to play with darkness because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the Rise and Sivir are really strong. If they if they fight 4v5 or 3v5, you know, they can still, uh, Maelstrom can still wipe the, the big carries off the map. Yeah. And before we even got into this, uh, when you, me and Gus were actually talking pre-game, you know, the fun stuff that you guys don't get to hear us talk about. I was talking about uh, junglers, conqueror junglers, right? They're, if you have conqueror that you can run effectively, you, congratulations, you've made it as a jungler. You can do some really effective stuff with that. You see Lee Sin has it. Uh, interestingly enough, not turn somebody who has actually seen a good amount of success in solo queue with conqueror. Uh, not being picked up with it is sticking with the tried and true uh, lethal tempo as well. So, could be an interesting thing to take note no, of. No, not going to be able to have that healing that's so nice on that not turn, but does have that new item like you're talking about playing around with darkness. Not turn. You guys see him make a very impactful ultimate uh, as we're going into the mid game here, because that would transition into some huge gains for them. Yeah, not only just Nocturne flinging himself at someone, but the six seconds of darkness that Paranoia brings will allow people like the Orianna to get in position oh. in sight unseen, and the Morgana to try and find picks as they look to see if they can two-man the Baron, but, you know, Zeta has Warrior and Sanguine Blade, not a whole lot of actual damage to be mm -hmm. done to the Baron, even with Caitlyn hitting it over the wall, so... Not quite yet, but with Caitlyn on your team, that's always something to keep an eye on, is that you can always try to do sneaky barons like that. Mm -hmm. I, I do find it curious that we are 27 minutes into the game, and the Caitlyn does not have tier 2 boots yet. That's actually a very curious thing for me to look at, especially since the only move speed buff you have is an Orianna. That is, uh, that's very concerning if you do get caught, because Caitlyn does have that net, but that's not the most mobile of escapes to have. Yeah, definitely on the movement speed front, that's interesting. But as far as attack speed, Caitlyn's base attack speed is one of the worst for ADCs in the game. Um, as they're going to turn on this Baron, because it looks like Purdue's down on the bottom side trying to clear vision. I don't know if they'll be able to do it quick, but here they come. Yeah, they do have TP available on the Scion. Scion looks like he's a little bit confused on this one. They know that they're there. The pinks are coming on out. They have the Spences, and that's going to be oh! a huge shockwave that just elites. Clam Sparkle. Now they're looking for the action. Holy is trying to kill off Cure. It's going to be an unstoppable onslaught into the middle. And we got a team fight, baby. Bishop's going to be able to take off one. As Holy's going to be able to take another one to the side. They're going to be able to secure the Baron over onto the red side here. They're just going to be slicing and dicing and trying to reap the mayhem. Not is going to be able to lay out a field of darkness just to cover his allies' escape route. Fred is going to be able to escape with his life. Neo's going to be able to run on away. But that is going to be three kills that are going to be picked up here by Purdue. Yeah, and I don't know that that's worth for the side of Maelstrom. They do get the Baron, but remember, it less, lasts less time now. And they're going to give up one of these Cloud Drakes, which, remember, does not grant movement speed anymore. Grants 10% on ultimate CDR. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they don't have a ton of super impactful ultimates. At least not like... You know, you look at it and you think, wow, that's such a crazy ultimate. You have Rise ultimate, yeah. you have Karma ultimate. But having more Dragon's Kicks and more Scion Charges and more Sivir on the hunts, you know, will be helpful. Mm -hmm. And it delays the soul for the side of Maelstrom by one more Dragon. It delays Elder Drake, you know, it's already hard for Elder Drakes to spawn in games. And giving up the, the kills and for the Baron makes it to where that Elder Drake is even less likely to be a thing at the, the game. But, you know, if they're scaling up, I think it'll probably end up mm -hmm. being that late in the game where we will see an Elder Dragon fight. We gotta have to talk about the fact that a lot of stuff was also used there. Orianna blew full combo to delete the Lee Sin that uh, was 1-4-2. and two. 
You yeah. gotta look at that, and you gotta be as a teammate being like, man, save the shockwave to take out the entire team. Like, look at the bill. Luden's Echo Morello Death Cap. That is absolute deletion, and you waste that on probably the least impactful member. Here we go, Paranoia onto oh. the backside here. Fear not gonna be able to connect, not gonna be able to get the snare either. Cure is gonna go find himself, oh, go down! My. Holy mother of damage! No, that's holy, holy that? KRP right there. Yeah, yeah that's he's true. at that point on rise. He has the Rabadons of his own. He's got a fully stacked Rod of Ages as well as the Seraphs and the Oblivion Orb. So he's doing a ton of damage right oh, now. Oh, here but comes the Shockwave. See, Looking to lay out the damage. Just going to be a Seraphs Embrace. Zeta's actually taking the tower. It's going to be holy. Oh, just no. going oh. after him. He is not done with you. Come on back over here. Here's the Realm Orb. He's going to be taking it. Now it's the playmaking to happen over here <laughs> in the bot side. Chuck T is trying to see if he can kite himself away from holy. But can you get away from this madman? Oh, the damage is being traded. Oh, they take each other's oh. life. Mid combat. But over here is Purdue saying, do or die, we will take your base. An inhibitor has been opened up, cracked open like an egg, and they're gonna go ahead and make a swift retreat. Yeah, holy KRP in the 1v3, fighting out of it as the rise there. Shockwave was invested, paranoia was invested, and he gets out. I mean, he ended up dying, but going 3v1, 3 4 1 in a 3v1, you almost can't ask for anything better than that, aside from just killing all three of them and getting out. But you see how much damage the Rise does at this point. He bought himself a Blasting one now, going to complete that Morello Nomicon just now. And he's almost full build, and this Rise is terrifying at this point in the game. And <sighs> he may be the linchpin for Purdue to win this game. I, I just don't... Like, I look at stuff, right? Like, I look at Holy Carp. And Holy Carp is over here just doing the work, putting it in, and... You gotta really look at Carp and just be like, like you said, he is going to be a the kingpin at this point in time. Because yes, that was a play that was tried to happen onto Holy Carp. That was a pick that was attempted. That was three people that went down there, failed, and then Holy took out three members. And now you gotta think where Holy is, you have to send more people to him to be able to deal with him or more resources to deal with him and not with them. That's going to be a lot of pressure that's being added on the Maelstrom here. Yeah, it's the traditional split push pressure, except it's not a typical split pusher. It's not the uh, Jax or the Zion Riven. getting jumped onto, but guess what? He's a tanky boy. He is Lord Thickums. You are not going to be able to do anything to that sponge. Yeah, and even still, like, they're pushing in, but Sivir can wave clear this over and over and over again. Meanwhile, Rise has Rabadons and all that AP, he will do some serious damage to towers as you see up there. So someone has to go back and deal with them, like we said, and he just realm warps right on out there and gets out of any sort of trouble that he could potentially be in. Uh, that's exactly what you need to do in this kind of scenario. You need to make sure you have that going for you. You can see they're pushing everything on in and this is good. I mean, you gotta think right now, like the gold lead is still just about the same. But the comms that are coming out from Purdue and the communication and how they're playing this game is so smart. This is high IQ coming out from this team. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking here at the gold and, you know, it's somewhat even except the carries of Purdue have more gold than the carries on Maelstrom right now. About a thousand to two thousand difference each. And that's that's quite substantial. Um... You know, the Scion and the Lee Sin don't need to have the big economy at this point in the game. You know, Lee Sin is essentially just a kickbot smite machine right now. And, and Purdue, looking at their quarterfinals, it was the mid and the eighty carry. It was Holy Carp and Bishop doing the work, doing the damage. And oh, wait, here we go. Paranoia is going to be coming out. They're trying to jump onto the Sivir there. Fear is going to be looking to go on out. But Cure is going to find himself in a bad spot. That's going to be Neo. That's going to be able to pick up the kill onto Clan Sparkle. On the bat side, Scion still there, absorbing all the pressure. That's going to be a shockwave. Only going to be able to land onto Bishop. Bishop is going to go ahead and go down. This Neo restoration is sitting there large and in charge Fred's gonna be able to bat pick up that kill onto NASA NASA is gonna be able to revive himself on up and that's gonna be holy carp oh, that's a triple kill carp. coming over the Neo Neo is not done with you yet he is looking for the quadra kill and he is going to be successfully able to get that that is an ace 
And that is exactly how Maelstrom needs to play the fights. They need to get the chaotic, messy fight because you look at the team comp of Purdue, they want to be together. They want to be somewhat close to each other. They need to spread out to avoid the shockwave, obviously, but they want to be close to enough to where they can focus fire people down. And when people start getting picked off and split up like that, it allowed for Maelstrom's team comp to really shine right there. And you see just how strong a Renekton is. He's 8-0-2 now. This is a big crock in the top lane. Man, he is taking full advantage of that Conqueror. He He's is level literally now too. <laughs> he is literally conquering, man. He has said, "Screw the Keystone, just name it after me." Neo Restoration, Conqueror of the Fields of Justice. Here, that is going to be a Baron that's going to be secured. Second Baron of the game going out for them. Cloud Drake looking to beat their intention here. TP is going to be used. Snare not going to be able to hit that. Bad hands on that one. Chuck, Chuck is over on the side. Looking to possibly steal it, but they're going to be able to get it. They have the jungler. Now Neo is on the bat side. They're they going to be able soul. to absolutely bust out Clam Sparkle. Neo is still looking for something, anything at all. And Nasta's got to watch out. He's got to be careful. Speed up from Karma Shield. And they're going to be able to get out of there sacrificing their jungler. Yeah, so they gave up the Cloud Soul, which the Cloud Soul is probably the least impactful out of all of them as far as combat goes. It just gives you the movement speed when you ultimate. Um, for Karma, it's real nice because she uses her ult all the time, so she'll get a lot of movement speed out of it. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, that means that the next Dragon fight, they gotta reconsider trading Baron for Dragon like they just did because Elder Drake is gonna spawn next. So we'll see if what they can do with this Baron because if they don't end the game here, they're gonna probably have to contend with an Elder Dragon fight. Uh, now they're trying to lay out the pressure with Baron. They didn't get to do this. That's a paranoia that's going deep oh! in. That's gonna be a two-man shockwave, but Flaw Logic is gonna absolutely delete Zeta and they're gonna turn their attention now onto the Scion now. They burn a lot. They're able to take him on out. It's a one-for-one one right now in front of the Inhibitor Terror in the mid lane and Right now, neither team is giving an inch. Yeah, well, neither team really has to give an inch because, like I said, Rise and Sivir can just wave clear. It's kind of on Maelstrom to really push this Baron buff because of all the wave clear that Purdue has right now. Mm -hmm. They really need to break the base with this Baron, otherwise things get a lot harder for them. Yeah, they ha they're having a little bit of visions. They're saying, we are going to make sure we utilize this right now. It is coming into a situation now where the game has gotten into a 10k deficit. Purdue in the largest deficit that they've been inside of this game. Got to see how those comms, that shot calling, if that's going to be enough for them to find their way out of this tricky situation. Sivir is now full build also. By the mm -hmm. way, she has the 100% crit with the Guardian Look Angel. So oh. <laughs> the only, And she's not even 500 yet. Like... <laughs> It's, it's just the 400 CS win condition. The only thing she can do now is sell Berserker Greaves for something else. But, you know, outside of maybe Bloodthirst or Mercurial Scimitar, I don't know what else she could potentially want here. Maybe sell GA if it ends up being used. But you look, Caitlyn's getting there. She has Bloodthirster now. She has another Longsword building, going to be building into, I would assume, a Last Whisper item. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to wait and see what exactly she goes for here. Oriana's now, Phil Bill, built a Rhylize to try and slow things down, especially with the Cloud Soul, all those ults going around, and Sivir ulti speeding everyone up. Definitely plays well for Purdue's team. Oh, wait, they're, they're looking. Here's engaged. the go button. And it's the unstoppable onslaught. Choo choo. Looking for something. That's going to be the snare to come on out. Bishop is stepping a little bit too Whoa. far forward. Oh. It's going to find himself in a bad spot. But oh, Chuck T oh, Chuck. is going to find himself going on down. That is going to be a kill shutdown going over to Holy Cock. Yeah, good recognition there from Purdue, seeing that Chuck was out on the other side of everyone else on his own. They were able to bait out the shock, or bait out, but take the shock. I was about to say, I don't know kill. if that was baiting. <laughs> yeah, they, they I don't know where Chuck out. T was. He got shockwaved, he tried to survive, but he couldn't, and now Holy Carp has another kill to his name. He is full build, picked himself up a Rhylize as well, and he can spread that slow big time in a team fight. So both of these mages looking to kind of slow things down and keep people together. That was a Oriana looking for like the game changing fight and what just did not have yeah. the positioning for the it, legendary I feel like. Oriana flank <laughs> and yeah was was a little too far away from the rest of the team to make it happen. I think if he was a little bit closer when they collapsed in on Oh, here we go. On top of one side, they're going for it again. Fred has the black shield, so he's not going to find himself getting knocked on up. They're going to try and use this pressure to go ahead and get themselves the inhibitor here. Are they going to be able to get anything on else? Lanasa is tanking up a lot of damage coming on out. They're laying it back onto Neo, and it looks like they're going to back off safe and sound and take an inhibitor and just say, that is fine for us. 
And you see how quickly their ultimates came back up with all these cloud drakes too. Like Scion's ultimate's almost back up again and Sivers is halfway and it, it, it still kind of just happened. So all these cloud drakes really benefit Purdue here oh, as well wait, as that. That's not getting hit again. They're looking for a choo choo. Clan Sparkle gonna find half of his HP uh, derailed there, and they're gonna have to back it on up. I it's love this. A quarter off cooldown. <laughs> I love this, dude. Scion, yeah, Scion great champion. Almost halfway back. <laughs> you gotta be careful with this. They have a playmaking move up every 30 seconds that's terrifying to see the scion train coming your way yeah but here's where it gets scary for maelstrom because we have about a minute left on baron and a minute 10 on elder drake they were not able to take an inhibitor out of purdue's base so things are going to get kind of sketchy. Oh, wait, for Paranoia them. coming on out. They're looking to jump onto Sivir. That is going to be the pit that they need to have him, but they're not going to be able to get enough. Sivir answers back with a ton of damage. Shockwave, no, Shockwave. is going to whiff. It's going to be the Unstoppable Onslaught coming on out here. They're going to be looking for some kills. They're looking to capitalize on it. It's going to be the Oriana that's going to find himself getting kicked and taken on out. While on the backside, they're going to be able to pick up the kill onto Lisa. Now, Scion is just zoning out the rest of the team. It takes so many people to deal with him. He is so spongy. He is so resistant. And they are able to chase off Mill. And there's going to be a dragon that looks like it's going to be spawning up here very soon. This could be a yep. very impactful time. Yeah, thankfully, Clam Sparkle will respawn just a couple seconds after the Elder. Oh, on top of Onslaught, coming out again. Oh. Neo's looking like he might be the target, but they're going to turn their attention cure. over to the Morgana Cure. He's going to find himself cure from this world as he is going to be taken on out. And the CDR on this Scion right now is ridiculous. It's every time they want to do something, it's up. And he can just continue to do this over and over and over again. So Cure really needs to have his Black Shield ready to go for whoever Scion decides to charge on into here. <laughs> it's terrifying. I don't know if you can prepare yourself for it, honestly. You just hear cowards, and it's just like, yes, I am a coward. Please stop it. They're going to get this other drink for free. They, they, I mean, what are you going to do, man? There is a big, beefy man with no nipples blocking the ent entrance, man. <laughs> you cannot contest that. All right, so now the onus is on Purdue. They have the execute. They can go for this Baron, try to get a fight with all the random AOE they have from Sivir bounces and Rise spells. They could wipe the entire team with this Elder Drake and win the game. Still down 9,000 gold. Oh, here comes a possible Baron attempt. They are teasing at it. Scion Play is car, solo doing it. I, I, they're just wanting to tease it right now. They're like, yes, we're doing it. Yes, look at us. We're doing it. Here comes a possible fight. They are continuously sending over these Oriana balls. This Baron is going down very slowly, but surely at this point in time, possible team fight. Neo is not in the area, but he does have TP. They're trying to make sure he has a ward set up that's going to be good to go. There's some pings coming on in, but it looks like they're they going to turn their attention sparkle. away. Wait, they might look for something here. Unstoppable Onslaught is back up, and here we go. They are stamping on, the on down. Back. They are running it down they're mid. The, the express route here. Scion's looking to run interference. Paranoia is going to be coming out onto the bat side. They're trying to do whatever they can, but Zeta's on the bat side. He's going to be able to get the fear, but that's going to be a GA that's going to be able to pop up and keep himself alive. Redemption's going to be used to try and keep their HP up high, but it's going to be oh, Fitcher. No, they're going to be able to pop him. They're going to be able to get a huge shockwave to be able to annihilate the side of Purdue. Now they're trying to fight themselves on back. Fitcher's they are trying dead. to kite it on back. It is a double kill that's coming out for this Oriana. It's going to be Holy Carp looking to do what he can. That's going to be oh. one. That's going to be possibly two. They're going to be able to pick yeah, up they're three. That is the triple kill coming out from Holy Carp. And he is absolutely decimating them. Look at how much work the Elder Drake did there. It popped people's GAs. They come back up, they get popped by it again. Even though Bishop died, I think they can end it right here. They're looking for it. They're possibly looking for it. Holy Carp is going to find himself getting popped because of the tower taking the aggro. Flawed Logic is in a tricky spot. He's going to find himself aim, lock, loaded, traded kills. The Elder Drake secures another soul. The double ace. <laughs> Directed camera doesn't know what to do right now. <laughs> Directed the camera's like, there's it's minions. Just, oh, man, that was crazy. <laughs> so they got what one Nexus watching? Tower. They got the inhibitor. The Baron's coming, or the Baron's available. They're teleporting on in, and they're looking for this Baron to try and end the game. But even with the Elder Drake, 
it still ended in a double ace, even though it's a 6,000, 7,000 gold lead right now. These oh, wait, they're looking for this. They're jumping onto Zeta. Zeta is trying to use the paranoia, but there is no escape. The only thing that needs to be paranoid is you, not Terran, because your jungle is no longer a safe space, and the Baron could possibly be the reward they pick up for themselves. They have turned it onto it, and they have all the damage to do this. It's up to Chuck to steal it with his shockwave dissonance combo, I think. The question is, will they give him the opportunity to do it? Yeah, gotta find out if he's good luck Chuck. Gonna have to find that out here as it is the Baron drop down to almost a quarter of its HP. It's very slow on how they're Carp's doing. Going for coming it. on in. He's gonna just go for him. That is the Dragon Rage. There's a lot of missed abilities coming on now. But oh, Clam, he, he wants it. He wants to jump in. His body's telling him yes. He gets it as the Baron is picked up on the side. Clam Sparkle going to pay for that with oh. his life. But here comes the Unstoppable Onslaught. Gonna run right into a wall. Do not advise that. But we are gonna see a Realm Ward that's gonna be coming out. He's playing some mind games now. It's Neo that's gonna find himself getting popped. He has the shield, but it's not gonna be enough. And it is just Holy Carp lays out too much damage. They're looking to carry this one back into their base now there are only three members here from maelstrom but lanasta he is so incredibly tanky you cannot do but so much damage to him and the unstoppable onslaught it's almost off cooldown yeah it's just about back up hopefully he doesn't just slide into the wall again and they can figure oh, it out oh here we go but... unstoppable onslaught is coming on out they're gonna be able to get the knockup onto the caitlin he's gonna find himself getting absolutely decimated that is one that is two that's gonna be going on over to Purdue, and this could be the game right now. Holy Carp is looking for blood. He wants to just get one more tick of damage. Can he get it onto the Morgana? Yes, he does. And Purdue, with an incredible 10k deficit, are able to bring it back and win the game. Yeah, they're still down gold as the game ended, but they were able to play around the objectives that they were able to get. They got those Cloud Drakes, which allowed the Scion ult to be basically a 30 second cooldown. It seemed every time you turned around, there was a Scion charging down at you. They got the Elder Drake, they won, well, they made that fight the double ace. They picked off the Nocturne, got the Baron, and won game one. Just absolutely phenomenal play that we saw there. Purdue showing calm. Uh, and, and just knowing what the strengths in their composition was, they looked at their comp and said, all right, we lost early to mid game. You know what? We scale. And you know what? It's one of those times where they, when somebody says we scale, it's not them saying that because they're going to int at that point in time, or they're just saying it to try and keep face. They actually it's say it because the it's a fact. Who's 0 and 3 yeah, it's not the vein that's 0 and 3. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I scale. <laughs> But, man. but very, very good stuff coming out of Purdue right there. That was a very good thing, especially with how far behind their actual jungler was. He was down levels on uh, the opposing jungler. It was, it was like two or three levels, and he was. They were still able to get objectives, and that's what won them that game was the fact that they were able to to get things together and find found a way to win the game. Yep, and absolutely on that one. With that being said, uh, Gus, you and me, we're going to have to take a break. Get ourselves ready for game two here. As a, This is a best of five, and this could be a l freaking tough one. Yeah, if all, if, all, if, all, if all these games are this close, we're looking at a five-game crazy series. So I'm excited. I'm excited for it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back as we get ready for game number two. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on back to UCL semifinals, where we have the ultimate in contendies here. Uh, we're in game two. Purdue taking game one after a massive comeback. And uh, we got to see what the answers are going to be here and uh, get into game. My name is Travis. I'm joined here by Gus. And Gus, are you ready for this coming up game? I'm ready. I kind of got debated by the draft because... Uh... Well, I guess no one else saw it except people that were in the lobby. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, they, they hovered Nautilus. They first picked Nautilus in the pro draft. And they had played Nautilus mid in one of their corner final games. And I thought it was going to happen again, but we got debated. So I'm a little upset about that. But uh, this draft is looking pretty spicy here. As we say, we see the Kled and the Poppy and the Graves being picked up here. Uh, to be fair, though, I mean, I've totally been playing a ton of tank tops. I mean, tank mids. So I've just been playing, like, Scion, Nihilus. Uh, even I've even been playing Kled mid lane. It's so much fun right now. It's so much fun because the other mid laner just looks at you. He's like, what am I supposed to do against this sponge? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I can bully him, sure. I'll get a CS lead, but he's just going to run into me. It's a great time in the kingdom, man. It's a great time. And... Yeah, we got a little debated in that regard, but hey, you want to talk about the king of debate, and it is Zoe on this being picked up by Holy Carp. And uh, you and me know the the fun that is uh, getting hit by that sleep The most ball. fun champion in the history of the game. Yep, yep, most fun champion. It's time, man. Yeah, right? I mean, it, you're playing. You're not playing tic tac toe or hopscotch. You're playing dodgeball when you're playing against Zoe. So Dodge many different things you bullets, have to look maybe. out for. <laughs> but I'm interested that there's so much priority put on the Rise here. And a lot of people think that Rise, especially with the way Conquer is now, is the best champion in the game mm -hmm. as far as like mid lane and top lane goes. And even though Holy Cart played it, played it very well last game, they banned it in the first round of bans this time around, so that way they could not first pick it. So mm -hmm. a lot of respect being paid here to Chuck T and Neo Restoration. Even if either one of them wanted to pick that up just to ban it even though they played it well last game banning nocturne as well from zeta you know you don't want to deal with the paranoia mm -hmm. and uh busting out olaf which um i believe was the champion he played when uh maelstrom lost the game they lost in quarterfinals so we'll see if zeta can have a redemption game for himself on this pick here because Olaf, one of those champions that can accomplish a lot early, but if he does not get going in the early game, it's kind of like Lee Sin. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about Lee Sin and looking over at Clam Sparkle. He's gone for something that's also a very squish, damage-oriented jungler, and a jungler that's risen up in priority here as of late. You've seen a lot of people uh, actually busting out Conqueror Graves actually in solo queue as of recent, too. So who knows? We could have double Conqueror. That would be exciting. Um... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, I'm I'm actually very excited to see exactly what these two teams bring. Well, uh, I we gotta say Nasta was actually a very underrated member of the uh, unit from Purdue, where he was tanking up all the hits and creating zones for his carries uh, to uh, carry within, which is yeah. absolutely phenomenal. So we playing Poppy, that's what that champion is. It's just zoning out the enemy, and that can be very pivotal against somebody like a Kled. Yeah, and you see that they banned Orn, so they respect Nash's ability to play these tanks that have big impact in team fights. Banning out the one with the the biggest team fight ultimate, I would I would say in the game in the Orn. Um, and but you know Poppy not as easy as to play as Orn, but can have just as much, if not more, of an impact as the Orn is able to as well. At least in fights, not with the you know making items better than they are thing, but you know overall, um, Poppy should be pretty fine pick and if nasta can do what he did last game on the sun is poppy then purdue will be in a very good situation for themselves and you know what it puts you in a very good situation it's if you go to kona and get yourself a keyboard that's right ladies and gentlemen you can go to kona and be able to lock drop and put your key newest keyboard in the cart and have it sent directly to your house your university wherever you may want it to be you can give it to your pizza delivery guy if you like that's right, you can go to Kono.store today and be able to get yourself the hottest and the best of keyboards out there. That's K-O-N-O dot store for you to be able to get the hottest and freshest of all the keyboards that you possibly can. And you too may be able to pop people like Rise. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to make sure we're taking ourselves a short break. When we come back, 
the game will be started and uh, it will be absolutely glorious. So don't go anywhere. All right, and three, two, one, go. And hey, and a production value. We could let you guys have a peek behind the curtains on how Upsurge is able to put up such high quality contendy games here. And with that being said, my name is Travis C. I'm joined here by Gus. We're in game two here. And Lord, I Lord, there is some conqueror on the field. Yeah, we got, how many is that? Three, three total. So yeah. not, not as many as we could have if they didn't ban Rise, but. Should have Conqueror no. on Zoe, man. Think about Conqueror oh, Zoe. Oh, Clam Sparkle could have gotten the ward, mm. but he eat just, just a little bit too early. Unlucky. Oh man, that's, that's unfortunate, man. That's gotta be detrimental to everything that you stand for. Your mental's gotta be down after that. You didn't get that ward. That could have been the way you gave your team the lead right off the get-go, and. Has to be just tough to swallow that pill. I'm sure he's devastated. De absolutely devastated. Probably just <laughs> contemplating life. He's like, man, I'm not. I don't even play this champion. Why am I playing Graves? It's just, it's a sad time, man. I think it's funny we haven't seen more Graves because he's actually buffed up to where he like higher than he was before he first got nerfed. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised it's taken people this long to actually realize that he's pretty strong. Yeah, he's pretty buff to begin with. I've seen what he has underneath that uh that mafia suit, you know. I've seen the the swimsuit version of Graves, you know. <laughs> Hugh Jackman would be proud. As we are getting into the landing phases of the game. Um, spoiler alert: we didn't get to see the very beginning of the last game, but it seemed like it was pretty even. See, so we could probably expect a little bit of the same, especially with the lanes that are matched up against each other. Yeah, I think we started spectating the game about 10, 12 minutes. Oh, in well, I said that, doesn't it? Night Knight has been put onto Fred. He has found himself in a bad spot. His HP is gone. Bishop picks up the first kill. Actually, that goes on over to Flawed Logic. It's going to be a trade. Bishop not going to be able to escape that anchor. Support will come back. Down. It is support will come back. Cure is going to be able to get out of that. That's fine. That's not nothing else that's going to happen from there. That's how supportal combat happens. You can get excited for it all you want, but no, nobody ever dies when two supports fight each other. Unless one of them is Pike. Unless one of them is Pike or Lutz. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop has teleport, so he gets right back to lane, no problem. Just gave some kill gold over to the Nautilus. Whereas Fred has to walk right back on in, miss some CS, and 
he's not feeling too good. And he actually kind of... He, he did things a little bit unefficiently. He queued before he flashed, so he just kind of stood there and ate a couple extra autos when he might have been able to try and get out, but I don't know. He He's doing what he's doing. He's Fred. I'm not. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I, I believe in Fred. Yeah, you should always believe in him as we have a gank coming on out. Clan Sparkle looking to lay out the oh, damage. Gosh. And that was a huge sleepy child bubble that it's going to be able to lay out the damage with the paddle star and that GLP coming in clutch. <laughs> it's always so hard to lean against Zoe and keep track of what she has to play with because she got GLP. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you don't expect a level 3 GLP in lane. You know, and that extra damage and slow is always something you gotta watch out for. And she just gets it for free. She didn't even have to do anything for it. Yeah, that's to watch out too, because now, like you were just talking about, I gotta keep track of all those things. You, you see, he already has a chilling smite as well, so this is even more damage that gets put onto it. It's just, it's annoying. Zoe throws everything at you, and it just doesn't feel good when she does. Definitely and, oh, not. There we go. It is a bind not gonna be able to kill Oh, that minion. I do have to point out something very curious real quick. The The fact that Chuck did not take cleanse in this matchup is a very important fact to actually take note of after seeing that uh, first kill. Opting for the teleport instead. Yeah, I mean, the teleport let him come right back after he died as Bishop oh. gets hooked on up. Yeah, but had to eat the pool from the Morgana there. Flawed logic. Able to lay out the pain onto him. As Neo dropped down very low, it's okay. He's right at remounting status, so he should be able to remount. And Olaf is also in the area. Yeah, and we'll see what Zeta is able to do on the Olaf. Like we were talking about in Champions, like during their quarterfinals matchup, uh, they won two to one. In the game they did lose, they ran a comp similar to this with a the top and jungle were the same. They ran Nautilus mid and then Zyra Khan in the bottom lane, and they ended up losing that game. And Zeta did not have a very good performance on the Olaf, so. In his head, he's probably thinking, I, I need to be able to do stuff. And with Dragon spawning soon, that might be what he decides to go for. Because Olaf is one of those junglers that can take the Drake by himself this early on. Especially once his health gets to about half. Is the bit of the happy spot where he can maintain that health with his W. And get a decent amount of attack speed from his passive to take down the Dragon. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if he ends up going for that or not. So we have Cloud. Mm -hmm. So there won't be... There won't be stacking clouds and crazy ultimate cooldown everywhere like there was in game number one. I'm sad already. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, having that on stuff like the Morgana, like the uh, all that other stuff, like the Kled as well? Have it on the Olaf. He's just constantly unable to BCC. Shot Oriana shockwaves. <sighs> I make a dream. You get hit by one depth charge, you get hooked, you get rooted, it's back up. Just think about Caitlyn. Caitlyn's just like, I don't even need to use this as an execute. It's a poking tool now. <laughs> I don't need auto attacks. I have all the old CDR I need. Then you go lethality Caitlyn like it's earth mode, it'll be beautiful. Uh, listen, I was talking about it. You know, lethality Caitlyn support. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it in. I want it. I'm going to I'm gonna mastercraft this. And you guys are going to be jealous when I hit uh, Grandmaster. Oh, yeah, that's oh, going to be the Sleepy Trouble bubble, bubble. And that's going to be a shotgun blast, a smoke screen, and it is going to be one more shot that's going to be able to pick it up. Clan Sparkle having a completely opposite game here and is having so much more impact on this graze, but this is going to be the Drake going over as Zeta almost dies to the Drake trying to secure it. Thankfully, Fred and Cure were able to come by and help him on out. Yeah, and that's Olaf. The lower he gets, the more attack speed he gets. The more attack speed, the more life steal he gets. He can turn on his W and get all that healing going on. So, you know, a low health Olaf is pretty scary because all that extra attack speed, he can always turn on W, get the more healing, and you never know exactly what he's going to be able to do. But so far, getting Drakes is the name of the game here for the side of Maelstrom because, mm -hmm. you know... Chuck's having a rough time in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Anytime he gets hit by a bubble, it seems like Clam Sparkle's right there to follow up on it. And he's he's yeah. just got to sit back and persevere through it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And look at this damage coming on out to this Poppy. He gets dismounted. The clay gets dismounted, but it doesn't even matter. The hurt keeps on coming. And that is just normal when you, for what you have to deal with when you face against a Kled. And 
I did want to point out something here. There it is. The jungler is looking to meet on up. Zeta's going to find himself getting caught on out. That smoke screen coming oh. on in. Flash Naka into the wall. Push him to the side. You can't make yourself immune from all that damage. Zeta guns himself taking out now. Neo, he's going to look to remount. Oh! But oh! Collateral damage. You can bring Skarl. He got two shots in the shotgun for you. Yeah, big time play right there from Clam Sparkle and Nasta, especially with that flash body slam there from Nasta into the wall before Olaf's able to be six. And then Clam Sparkle comes in and he's three and O for himself on this Graves jungle so far, making the pick work out fantastically. I I just gotta say, man, Clam Sparkle, it's like he's awake now. He is like wide awake. He's like, mm. All right, now that least seeking game was my wake up game. That's me getting the gears going, making sure I'm all warmed up. Now he's out here just showing out what his shotgun can do, and so far it has had a huge impact across the map. Yeah, and he is down a bit of CS to the Olaf down mm -hmm. down the Drake, obviously, but you know I don't think he really cares too much at this point. Mm -hmm. And you know Graves does scale up relatively well especially since you're able to go for the crit build and become a second ADC, pretty much tank your ADC, can't auto through minions. But later on in the game, once he has a bunch of AD and has some crit behind him, he should be doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And now this is the game kind of stagnating for right now. This is something when you're looking over here, if you're a fan of Maelstrom, right? Or if you're a player of Maelstrom, what, what are you looking for as your way? Because right now, a lot of these lanes not having a great time, at least in terms of the 1v1s. They're finding themselves on the worst end of those. What's what's the goal for them? Well, the game for them is not over just yet. They still have Engage as Kier goes in here yep. with a hook. And gets a lot of damage onto him. They're going to have to use the depth charge. Flawed Logic not going to find himself on the cupcake there. Not a fan of the bait oh. trees. Bishop's going to find himself. Killer Instinct, great spell shield. The snare lands on the Chuck T and he finds himself getting decimated. Now it's the Poppy that's over here on the side teleported on in for the action. But that was a beautiful use of uh, summoner spells and abilities right there. Especially from Flawed Logic. Yeah, Chuck thought he had the the, the break on him and Flawed Logic with a good flash. Bishop ate the shockwave, Killer Instinct on out. Kled actually used the charge, it looked like, to try and stop Nasta's teleport and was not successful. So that's a pretty long cooldown at this point when Kled doesn't have any CDR. So, you know, Kled taking the fangs out of Kled for a little while here. He got mm -hmm. a tower plate or he's about to. Oh, no, wait. Zeta's right looking for something here. Holy does have a flash in his arsenal. He's looking to turn this on around. He says, I'm going to claim your soul. He's going to be able to pick up that kill. Now Clam is going to be in a situation. He needs to bat this on around. He's got a rotation of shotgun oh, he landed to it. come on out. The Ignite goes yes. on in and Cure able to outplay that scenario and pick up the kill on the Clam Sparkle. Yeah, the, <laughs> if you're Clam Spark right there, you're just watching your health burn down. You're like, huh, well, guess I'm dead. And that's just Nautilus. <laughs> he's just able to... I guess yeah, I so die now. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, I'm, I guess I'm dead. I don't know. Not, not Nothing to do here. I think the only oh, way to save well, him is if Morgana's guarding uh, him. Lots of damage coming on out. Flaw Whoa! Logic not going to be able to block that shot. Bishop almost going down. Neo Restoration going to get dismounted over in the top side. Oriana yet again roaming down to the bot lane for going CS and is just trying to have some help on one of these side lanes, but isn't able to find that resource. Isn't able to get in range for that shockwave this time around. And they have beautiful vision down here on the bot side if you're looking at the side of Maelstrom. Yeah, and you know, that's kind of where the focus in the meta currently is, is on the bottom half of the map. You got the dragons, you got your bottom lane right there. You can make four people plays, five people plays happen, and now we have Ocean Drake. So we will either have Infernal Rift or Mountain Rift, and we'll see if Zeta is able to get himself over there for this dragon or not. Mm -hmm. And Kled and Nasta having some fun up in the top lane. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's... <laughs> Here Despite, comes Chuck, though. He's looking for a roam. Yeah, looking for something. He, he, Like I said, he wants to get something down in one of these side lanes because he's not getting anything done in the mid lane. Now Cure is finding himself getting caught out by Clam Sparkle. Black Shield has been used oh, because it says rip. no CC for you. And Clam Sparkle's going to be able to pick up the kill. Oh. Now is going to be Sleepy Trouble Double Bubble Time. Riding Rock is going to have to be used. Clam Sparkle is just going to go ahead and blast him right in the face. And he's going to be able to pick that kill up for himself there. Beautiful use of Zoe. And... Unfortunately, did not use the Ragnarok to just dodge all of that. 
Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is he held on to that Ragnarok for a really? Oh, the bubble landed! Oh no, the bubble means that's a lot of damage. We didn't get to see it, thankfully, because I was gonna tell everybody to cover their eyes, cover, make sure no children watch this, because this is unadulterated damage coming out. Oh, but yeah, Fred. back to Zeta. He definitely could have used the Ragnarok. Oh, all the damage. oh Fred. Fred! He is dodging Fred. everything, but you can only dodge for so long. Bitch picks up that kill, but here comes the TP. Neo is looking to make something happen. Gonna be able to get the bear trap on a rope over onto the Kaisa. That's gonna be shut down. That's gonna be going on over to Neo Restoration. As it is going to be an Infernal Dragon that is going to be taken over onto the side. They're still looking for the action as Holy is trying to kite this one on back. The Nautilus is trying to get in range to make something happen. Clam Sparkle going to find himself getting taken down by the team at Proc. And going to be able to pick that up as the Nautilus hook just goes a little short. Lots of damage getting put right back on the Cure. And all in all, so much happening across the map. And a loss over here in the top side just trying to take Harold while this is all happening. Yeah, and you see the problem of playing against Zoe is even when the, you think the fight is done and you're walking away, you got to be careful for those behind you paddle stars. They'll come and slap you on the butt on your way out, take a good chunk of your health bar along with it. Uh, because it's just just going to happen. Like we said, playing dodgeball is the name of the game against Zoe. It's like I gym just, class all over again. No, 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 no. All I have in my mind is like they, they're making a gym uh, gym class Zoe, and it's just the paddle star is like smacking it, and it's just GG every single time you get hit by the paddle star. And I don't feel comfortable with that. It's like, good game, good play, good hustle. I don't, I don't want that voice line whispering in my ear when she pours in on me, man. We're making Riot tons of money here. Rito, please. I don't want it, man. No locker room Zoe for me. I don't want it. Oof. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and we're going back in. Uh, 15 minutes into the game. We got to take note, though. The last game did have a lead that was in favor of um, Maelstrom. And the last time in Purdue was able to fight back. That same option could be something that could be available uh, for the side of Maelstrom here as they're in the opposite side of the field. They could find their own upset victory to come on out. Yeah, definitely. When you have Oriana on your team, you have the Nautilus on your team, there's always the potential for a lot of knockups and a lot of CC and a lot of damage to come out. Unfortunately, the Oriana is 0-3-1, has to build Merc Treads because of the matchup, so the Shockwave isn't going to be world-destroying like we, we've seen other Orianas be, unless she gets really fed really quick here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to be a while before the Shockwave becomes relevant to actually, like, deleting a team. Um, and until that point, the Zoe is way more useful, you know? Zoe's Zoe's from Globo Gym, and everyone else is average Joe's. Uh, wait, here we go. We got Bishop hooked on up. Spell Shield has been used. Zeta is here in the area. They're looking to get the action, but there is just Bishop just free-firing on the backside. They don't have anything onto him. Zeta is going to find himself going down. That is a double kill going over to Bishop, and it is going to oh, be man. a triple kill going on over to Bishop as he's just free-firing in this game. Yeah, Bishop really strong now once he goes back and spends all that money. He got, got himself that nice triple kill. Got himself the evolution there. Has the Storm Razor. He's, he's flying high right now. And the game, it's only a 4k gold lead, but it's 9 kills. They got a dragon for themselves to even it up. I just... uh, Zeta's 1-4. Chuck's 0-4. Fred's 0-3. It's, it's looking rough right now for Maelstrom. I just, I gotta say, real quick, PSA, um, I don't know how many people have played on the new patch. If you go in that little loop-de-loop, -loop, uh, you're not untargetable. So you can still continue to, you know, <laughs> focus down the AD carry if they run into that. I'm not sure if people know about that one. Uh, but it, I, I'm still just amazed that Akaisa got that much room just by running around a, a loop. That is insane. <laughs> Yeah, the geometry there makes getting vision in there pretty tricky. Um, there's not really one spot where you can see every little thing due to the way the bushes mm -hmm. are shaped on the outside of it, too. So it, it, it can definitely mess with vision. And, uh, there was a post on Reddit of uh, a Skarner top facing off against like an Olaf or something and they were just like chasing each other around and around the alcove back and forth yeah I've seen this I've out. seen this yes yeah yes. and then the, then, then Zed shows up and kills the Olaf like 
Just cue the well, Benny Hill music. A lot of people music. are having fun with the Alcos. Yeah, cue, cue the Benny Hill. But here comes Bishop. He's yeah, Bishop right is up. taking some big hits, though. He's going to find himself getting the law laid on to him. Guardian proc comes on in. Bishop is going to find himself saying, okay, I'm not that strong. Let me back up and reevaluate myself. Walks up. Starts fight. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. Let me just, let me get on out of here. Just AD carry things. Oh, there we go. They are looking to drop the Herald down here in the bot side. That's the killer instinct being oh, used. Oh, shit, is going to be a trade here. AD carry taking them on out. Fred is going to be able to get his first kill. Soul Shackle is going to be laid on out. That's a lot of damage coming out. Not to Fred as Clan Spark is going to be able to pick up that kill. As the Shockwave did come out from Chut T. Just enough to dissuade the side of Purdue, and they're going to find themselves just backing on up. Some HP bars are kind of low there, and there is a Kled over in the mid lane that could join the fight at any moment. Yeah, but you see, normally when you see a Shockwave, you think about how much damage it's going to do. But the only thing I could think about with that Shockwave is the amount of damage it didn't do. Mm -hmm. Morgana was like a third health, and it barely took her down like 120 health, it looked like, so... That's Chuck what happens when you rush Merc Treads. Go this game. If you yeah. rush Merc Treads, uh, the, your damage will show. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> not having the great game that he had. That's a good point to take note of. Chut T had a very good early game. And you got to think, how much was of that was Zeta on the not turn, which is a very early to mid game focused character in terms of how much pressure you can put out? And how much is Holy Carp actually just performing inside of this series versus Chut T? It does draw a comparison as we were getting into the second game, and we're getting more of a sample size here. Yeah, and but here's the thing is Olaf is also early and mid-game oriented, and mm. Zeta has not had a good performance on this Olaf 1-5-1 and one thus far into the game. And, you know, it's kind of when you pick a champion like the Olaf, like the Lee Sin from last game, where you need to make things happen early and you don't, it, then you have to kind of look as to what else can your champion do. Uh, for Lee Sin, he has a very fantastic ability to take objectives and his ultimate is very, can be game winning if you kick the correct person into mm -hmm. your team and pick them off. With Olaf, however, he still has some pretty decent objective control with his reckless swing doing true damage. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's like, what's he going to do? If he doesn't do damage, he's just going to run in and be annoying. He's going to run at die. you menacingly. Yeah. <laughs> His secret technique, he's running at us menacingly. And with the build, Zeta is still going, still going for this black cleaver. Um, oh, wait, here's some I, I action. Fred, where did wow! you go? That is going to be some action down there in the bot side, just pushing him on away. Cure is going to find himself getting his life. Here comes the charge to so come on out. No, Nasta is going to find himself They're in a 1v2 situation. They're just going to do Baron here. Nasta says, peace out. I'm out of here. Going to be laying out some damage. It's just going to look to just survive as long as possible. Congratulations, kiddos. That's a flash use just to waste some more time. And Baron has been started on up. Bishop and Clam, they have a lot of damage between the two. The Baron is already under half HP. They do oh, have two target members. Chutty has the Shockwave available for him. He has to be able to use it. No, he is Got not going to be able to get in range. That is going to be Baron going over at the 20 minute mark and Kled Good no ball. charge beautiful hook coming out from Cure they're going to be able to pick up Clam on the bat side of it but there is still a Baron on Purdue at this point yeah and I don't know if that was like the call was to try and get a pick on the bottom and give up Baron since it only lasts for 3 minutes at this point in the game they might not be able to do a whole lot with it but you know it's just kind of odd that after after Fred died in the top lane, that Zeta would show bottom because mm -hmm. that's kind of just like we have the numbers advantage, jungler's bottom. Let's just Baron. Yeah, easy it, call. It seems pretty obvious. So mm -hmm. it it just seemed kind of interesting to me there. But mm -hmm. you know maybe they're just like yeah, Baron doesn't last that long. We still have some okay wave clear. They're not gonna break our base off this. Yeah, not gonna break the base off of this. Uh, the Baron, great call to come on out. It does show a little bit of interesting things. There could be possibly a little bit of panic here. But I do want to point out something. We were talking about contrast and whatnot, comparing things. Game 1, this is the exact same scenario. A large amount of kills on one side, a 6k deficit uh, that was not in favor of blue team, 
And they were able to come back here. This could be uh, something to keep an eye on, especially because the Baron was also early drag. But Bishop, he's wow. just running forward. I have never seen an AD carry so fearless. Clam Sparkle gets him on the side. And Bishop, he starts the fight. He's still alive. He is actually going to pick up a kill on the side. Lanasa's here to pick up Cure. And he's going to take him on downtown, laying out the damage. The snare is going to be used. And that is just too much damage for him to refuse. Bishop is on a killing spree. Yeah, and you know, that's kind of the 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 thing that Kaisas have been doing a lot lately is going on in and they have like a Kale or something on their team to provide them some utility. Bishop just says, whatever, I'll just flash right on out once he once I bait out the shockwave and you guys can kill him. Yeah. And you know, he's eight two four, he just finished his rune on hurricane now too. And they're pushing in on two fronts here, opening up the base. Yeah, nobody does enough damage to just destroy the black shield is a problem right now and now we're seeing lanasa he's gonna find himself getting jumped onto but is it a bait rated eight out of eight mate lanasa is just absorbing up the hits neo you might be a little bit too far forward buddy you might be a little bit greedy wow. and that is going to be oh, him getting taken down shockwave is going to be able to hit three in the backside it's going to be huge but fred is looking like he's going to get oh, decimated from downtown bishop is just going to completely annihilate with that triple kill and they are going to look to end this game super early early right now could be a possibility for more kills hp bars are still low one tower has gone ahead it. and dropped they're looking to one try and end this die. game there's gonna be another tower to go on down they're gonna get the kill onto bishop do they have the damage to be able to take this nexus here they are looking to try it for it cure's gonna find oh, himself getting so knocked back there's so many minions just wailing away holy carp is laying the pain and it is gonna be a nexus to explode 24 minutes into the game purdue closes this out Wow, what a contrast of a game there. Game two versus game one. We saw Maelstrom get a lead early on in Purdue, bring it back, and they kept that momentum rolling. We saw that Olaf just could not accomplish anything outside of getting that first dragon. Everything he did went poorly. And we saw that from them in their quarterfinal match. The game that they lost was on Olaf, and he had not that great of a scoreline. So, um... I think they just need to uh, to just hit the reset button here because this could be it. It could be the three-game sweep if Purdue ends up winning this game. And we've seen that Maelstrom has the tools to gain a lead and, you know, threaten Purdue's base. They, they need to find a way to make it happen, and I don't think Olaf is the answer. And you should also probably think about banning Zoe. Yeah, that is uh, true. Or if you have the option, ban out Holy Carp. The man has just been on a tear here. And Holy Carp has been just really just swimming upstream no matter what. He doesn't care if there's a 10k deficit or a 10k lead. He's going to be putting out the same amount of damage. They're going to have to really put some respect on his name and figure out a strategy to kind of neutralize what kind of advantages he gives the team. Because we cannot look at the fact that this, the in game two now, Mid jungle opened up so much pressure for this team. Yeah, and that's that's how Purdue likes to win their games is they have their mid and their AD carry, do the carrying, do all the damage, get all the kills, and then uh, you know Graves is something you have to look at too from them. And we saw in the quarterfinals they banned Graves a lot, and in the second game they left Graves up and he carried and he did it this game as well. So definitely. Mm -hmm. Maelstrom needs to hit the reset button here, needs to get the bad mental out and reset and come in with a different plan here because if they try to do the same thing, we may see another 24-minute game in Game 3. And before we head ourselves over to break, I do want to go ahead and give a shout-out to that Morgana too because those spell shields were picture perfect. There is, It's been a long time since I've seen a Morgana actually put out spell shields in an appropriate time like this Morgana did, was constantly doing, was actually constantly aware of their own positioning while also being aware of who is the right target we saw it multiple times with the shockwaves we see we saw her flash out of a shockwave to spell shield the kaisa who is still in the shockwave so the kaisa would be able to survive it not get cc'd and then kill her instinct i mean there's so many good things that came out of this game we're going to yeah, be going into one logic ugh. in the lobby real quick uh, he's listened to the stream. He said, I am Morgana one trick. That's why as soon as I joined. So there's a little bit of insight there for you. 
the Morgana plate. He knows his way around the Morgana. <laughs> as you should, as you should. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take ourselves a short break, get ourselves set up for game three as Purdue is on match point as they are heading into game three, two and oh. We're going to have to see if Milstrom is going to be able to pull this one on back. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on back. We are back with some UCL. It is 2-0 in favor of Purdue. My name's Travisy. I am joined here by Gus DePosey. And are you ready for game three here, buddy? I am, especially because Maelstrom took my advice, hit the reset button, and are running a completely different team comp, which uh, we'll, we'll see as soon as they run through this draft here. Mm -hmm. um, Purdue kind of just running in more of the same, more or less. You know, they got a tank up in the top lane. They got an early game jungler. They got a mage. They got a bot lane. You know what the saying is, man, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Like, you don't need to make any adaptations when you're 2-0 inside of the series so far in this best of five. That is a very big statement to make, and right now, they're the ones that have the momentum on their side. Yeah, definitely, especially after that game two, 24 minutes, they got Baron, they made the use, and they ended the game with it, and it was, it was crazy. They just decided, okay, we win now, and just kind of ran on through, so... You know, we'll see what Maelstrom brings on in here. They have Singe top lane to counteract this Ornn. They will be picking the Gragas in the jungle. Uh, Purdue has answered with the Olaf in the jungle here as soon as Clam Sparkle locks that in. But the thing I'm excited about here is this mid lane matchup because we have Syndra against Irelia. And it's been a little while since I've seen someone play Irelia mid in a competitive setting. Mm -hmm. But then again, new Conqueror, new Irelia. So we'll see exactly how that works because we all know the power that that champion used to have. Mm -hmm. And with the new Conqueror building up all that extra AD and going crazy with the same healing and stuff, she might even be stronger than she was before. Could be. I mean, maybe not. She she was pretty busted. Yeah, yeah she'd be but, disgusting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But she should be pretty good, especially if she can get onto Syndra and not get pushed away or have a Q reset for when she does get pushed away, just to come right back on in. That could be a pretty interesting matchup for the Syndra to try and play out of. But now it's Clam Sparkle's turn to play the Olaf. And he's like, Zeta, you played it. I'll, I'll show you how to play it better. So he's coming on in with that. Gragas, very utility pick, able to do a lot of different things. So... I'm interested. And then bottom lane, we will have Lucian Nautilus for the side of Purdue against the Zyra Khan coming out from Maelstrom. So very powerful lane for Fred and Cure down there. And I'm I'm really hoping that they bring it to Lucian because I've I think Lucian is kind of a trap pick right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like every time someone picks him, they don't get enough accomplished early on and he ends up being an anchor for his team no pun intended with the nautilus or maybe pun intended i don't know how my brain works sometimes but <laughs> she you know, always be Lucian... fully in intend your puns you coward <laughs> Lucian... <laughs> if lucian doesn't get going early he's definitely definitely a dredge to his team at times um so it'll be interesting to see if Bishop can do what he did on the Kaisa and make things happen early on because, you know, Nautilus, Leona, champions like that are pretty good into the Zaya Rakan matchup just due to the amount of targeted things they can put out either on Rakan to stop him or on the Zaya to force her to use her ultimate in situations where she doesn't really want to. So I I'm really excited to see how this game comes out because they banned Nastazor and we saw what he did on the San and the Poppy. So I'm, I can't wait to see what he's going to do on the Orn. I'm waiting for some sick ultimates. Coming I, out I don't think he's going to be able to do that much, man. As somebody who likes playing Sinch, Sinch really hurts Orn, man. It's not a great time. Uh, it, it, not only is Sinch like the anti-tank out there, he's the terror of uh, Orn's livelihood, man. Orn can't escape this guy. Orn finds life in TFT since he's there to, to destroy everything. He finds himself in, getting picked in a competitive League of Legends match. There's a Singe right there, and that ground from Singe is just stupid for Orn to have <laughs> to deal with, man. So, I... I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on this matchup. Nasta has shown that he's played well in matchups that don't favor him, but... We're going to have to see exactly what he'll be able to do with this. Yeah. Uh, Singe can be pretty annoying. I don't, I don't know. Does Singe think Conquer now? He stacks even slower than he did before, right? I don't think it's something that he'll take. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
I haven't played him since the new Conqueror came on out. Um, it was really slow for him before because you had to take it night, and it sucked. I hated it. But here he should be able to get it if he really wanted to. I've seen a bunch of different people go on different things. I think people are still like trying things out when it comes down to Singed. Um, oh, wait, I think DLT counts for like one stack every five seconds yeah, or something. Yeah, so, so you know, if, if they're somewhere. chilling, he could probably proc it, but probably. yeah, man, but the, doesn't not gonna seem be optimal. <laughs> not optimal, not optimal, but you want to know something that is optimal? Find yourself what? a fantastic place to compete with with Midwest. Midwest hosts some of the finest esports tournaments out there in all of the land. Not only in the Midwest, their name, Deceitful, I know. These guys are able to just branch out, make sure that you're able to have the finest, the hottest, and the fiercest of competitions. Feel free to check them out. They are proud supporters here of us over here in Upsurge. And have honestly just been an absolute blast. And you can always follow them on to the social media that they have up. And you'll always be able to find all of the latest updates on Midwest. With that being said, Gus, we're going to take ourselves a short break. We are going to be right back as the game starts on up. All right, three, two, one, go. And there you go. A sneak peek into the fantastic world of NA production here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in what could possibly be the final game of this best of five. My name's Travis D. I'm joined here by Guster Posey. And it's time to, to throw down as we are seeing a interesting five stack up here in the top side. Yeah, they're going to try and uh, get this singe set behind a little bit, help out their little Orn buddy. Uh -huh. Maybe they're going to hide in the alcove, baby! Alcove blaze! Oh, they're looking for it. They are taking the long route around. 
Wrap it on around town. Around Neo town. Around Neo down. is going to find himself in a bad spot. He's going to find himself getting a excellent flash there to dodge that hook because that was his death sentence for sure. I was going to say, most singes don't take flash, right? They generally take ghost or something. I right? take it. I take it. In this day and age. I mean, it's, <laughs> like, it's like so, sometimes when I play Hecker, I might take flash too. Yeah. People are always like, why don't you have Ghost or Ignite, you noob? And then I, like, flash out of something. Never like, underestimate the power of flash flinging somebody, man. It sends a message. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, unfortunately wait, there, I mean... Wait, 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 wait. What? Does Orn only have the refillable potion? I was about to say, I was about to say. Corrupting? I mean, he's Orn, so it doesn't matter, but, like, that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, so look at this invade that's actually coming on out here. They're looking oh. for some action here. This is going Wait, to be here. a... Yeah, Curious here. They actually had to back up from this. They called their bluff. Knock up, not going to land, but it is going to be a flash. It's going to be trade out. Unsealed Spellbook is there for the Nasta. They're looking for more. Chuck is in the area. Flash Ooh. Body Slam going to be able to connect. Nasta is going to be charging on forward. They're a little bit split on their target focus, though. And no buffs are going to be claimed here. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't see much sense in chasing after an Olaf because you're going to get slowed, and by the time you catch back up to him, his axe is going to be back off cooldown, the undertow. So, uh, not a lot of sense chasing the Singe, and while that was a nice body slam flash from Zeta, it didn't really accomplish a whole lot. Yeah, and Singe actually started poison. Uh, that's uncharacteristic. You don't really start poison as much like oh! that. Oh my god, they went for an aggressive move, Fred! Flaw traded his HP for Fred's there as that is just straight up harassment there. And there's the reason why you see refillable. He just instantly gets a door and shield. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he bought corrupting there if it would fill it up for him. Because that might be the play is just to start refillable on Orn and buy corrupting when you have the gold for it. Use up your refillable potions and then get three corruptings. I don't know if it works that way. That'd be pretty OP. But yeah, every uh, oh man, you see the damage coming on out there. Yeah, every time I play Orn against something like a that's not gonna aggress on you super early on, I almost always do this start. Oh, it's so good, but that's another hook under the tower yet again. Flaw logic is aggressive. Yeah, I mean he said he was a Morgana one trick, so he's just kind of applying the dark binding to the hook and making things happen. Same prison, man. <laughs> same key does the same kind of thing he's feeling right at home yeah yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, absolutely and he is tanky as can be flop logic is gonna have to be somebody that they're gonna have to keep their eyes on because your tower is not a safe zone when this man is around he is yeah gonna... especially once that aftershock procs and he, he can take an extra tower shot or two as long as he's taking them while the aftershock's going as we saw when he hooked fred under the tower Took like three or four tower shots there. Bishop also, by the way, thing to take note of, got has gotten such a huge early CS lead from that early skirmishing that happened in the jungle. And look at this, Olaf's inside of Gragas' jungle yet again. Yeah, and they're rotating over to protect him from the collapse, potentially from the Zyra Khan, but just forcing Zeta on out. And Olaf claims that he's already four CS up, which is one camp. Once he finishes Grump, there you go, 24 to 16, so... Gragas having a rough go of things thus far, does have his boots ready with the Predator and the other jungle items, but Olaf, he's just going to continue doing Olaf things. And I gotta say, man, this is exactly what you want to see with Olaf. You were talking about it early, Olaf things. Olaf wants to live inside your jungle. This is somebody who is so good at fighting you inside of your own territory, just going into your air and just throwing these axes, getting the damage going, and stacking up that Conqueror. So, really clam. He, he, he's wide awake after game one. Game two showed a great performance on Graves, and now it's just been applying so much pressure in game three here. Oh, I think it was more lots of it, damage. Was Wait, one. Neo in a bad spot. Going to be able to throw that adhesive on the ground. But Nesta is doing a phenomenal job up here in the top lane, too. Just has been constantly making Neo feel the pain. You know, it's just surprising because Singed is normally known as the tank killer in the top lane. You pick him into tanks, he sits there, he does his poison thing and laughs at him. Flings him around and stuff. But, oh, look uh, at the damage, Chuck! Drop down very low, no ignite on holy, so isn't going to be able to just ignite him and pop him, but isn't going to get the electrocute. Now, Bishop, Bishop is getting jumped onto, not going to get hit by anything. Like you said, beautiful dodge coming out from him. 
Yeah, the thing to remember about the Aurelia Syndrome matchup is Aurelia's W only does physical damage reduction now. It's no longer just pure damage reduction like mm. it used to be back when she was really busted. Uh, oh, Logic wait. grabbing a wall. Yeah, they're going to grab the wall, but they're looking to grab somebody's life here. But Bishop's going to find himself just getting baited on out. Lots of damage coming on out. Bishop is in a tricky spot. CC being applied to Cure to keep him away from Bishop. And great turnaround coming from this bot lane of Maelstrom. Yeah, that's just the power of Zyra Khan. They have so many ways, and Rakan does a pretty decent amount of damage on his own, so you can never just kind of ignore him. You saw he almost smacked Bishop to death right there, and this is kind of where the Lucian pick gets in trouble a little bit, because now he's only up 2 CS. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he had a big old lead, and he might miss some of this wave. It looks like they're going to stick around and try to pick it up, but... Even still, that's not what you want to see for the Lucian at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. Not what you want to see. It's going to be a bet that's going to be coming out. We're going to see about an equal amount of gold being spent over from both sides. A little bit more from Bishop since he is going to be able to get a little bit more of these minions. So we'll see what he comes on back with. And it is going to be a curious thing to look at. And yet again, here oh, is oh, close. Clam. Clam almost smiting away that Gromp living inside of Zeta's jungle. I like that Olaf took the Nimbus Cloak because they changed that rune. It no longer gives you movement speed. It only gives you movement speed on a summoner spell cast, which counts the smites, the red and blue smites. So mm. Olaf, just in case he wasn't fast enough trying to chase you down, now he gets a movement speed boost when he smites you. Yeah, movement speed, a stat that scales with your skill, man, as I see it. If you got the movement speed, you can make the moves, you can do the jukes. It's always a phenomenal thing to see, and it leaves that stat in the hands of the Beholder, because that could be a dead stat if you're just bad at juking or moving, or just bad in general. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not a lot helps you out if you're just bad in general. So. Yeah, and, yeah, not much besides a Kono keyboard at Kono.store. That's K-O-N-O dot store. Highest quality components, right? Yeah, highest quality components that will make you click clack all over the rift as that is a potential gank that happens there. Does not succeed as the predator was used by Gragas. Not gonna be able to pick that up. He's gonna have to head back to the store and pick himself some Graggy ice. Oh, a knight being used here on Neo. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't spellbook fun? You just get to use all sorts of random stuff all the time. Oh, Hex oh, Flash. Oh, there you go. coming on in. They're looking for the action. Olaf's here in the area. They're looking for the fight. Good Bishop's going to be able to dash on through this. And Fred's finding himself taking a lot of damage. Now, Clam Sparkle's in the area. And yet again, Bishop goes around the loop, brings it around town, and gets the first blood. <laughs> yeah, he blew himself a big bubble there, gets first blood out of the deal. And he has Bilgewater Cutlass, and that's what you want to see for your Lucian, getting that first blood. Growing the CS lead now. After this, it's 10, and it will be another uh, probably four or five. Might lose the whole wave there. Zaya's on her way back down, but that's what you want to see. But Chuck's going in on Holy Carp. Yeah, he's looking for it. He is laying out the blades, but the tower oh, is going to be able to get away. Holy Carp, why did you step up? He just got smacked going out, and Chuck T wins this 1v1 today. And that's the physical damage reduction does work on tower shots. So able to save the w for the last tower shot pokes him with that little bit of damage it does and takes him down that was beautifully done by chuck t and he said you know what remember game two it's my turn to smack you around here holy carp as really just an impressive play and even that all started with him dodging out on a couple abilities coming out from holy carp and getting a stun of his own out so very very yeah. well done here and he can build directly into the wits end as he's doing just for the MR, the extra damage on hit. And he'll be doing just fine in this lane so long as Olaf's not there. If Olaf's there, things things get a little bit different. You don't want Olaf anywhere on the map uh, when you're making a play at this point in time. Because Olaf is very much so laying out a lot of pressure and not knowing where this Olaf yeah. is. It's a scary thought. He's going for the hard pressure. He rushed the cooldown boots, which mm -hmm. is something Olaf's do when they really want to abuse their early game power. Uh, he still might end up going the Warrior Black Cleaver here, but getting those cooldown boots early just lets him throw out axes even faster, 
pick him up. Ooh. They're ready to go right ahead. Less cooldown on Ragnarok oh, and cure. Dodge cure. Out. He's going to have to use the quick, and he's going to be able to get a lot onto this Syndra here. Ragnarok is going to be used. That's going to be the explosive cast coming out, but it's not going to be enough to get Clan Sparkle off of you, Zeta. Now he's looking to keep this fight going on, and that's going to be a double kill going on over to Clan Sparkle. Cure, you're the only member left standing. And he is going to find himself finding salvation. Possibly he's going to have to find himself getting some chickens. Raptors, His XP Raptors. dropped down so low. He is going to be fine there. As Neo is going to be putting him out. The direct cam did not want us to see what was happening there. Did not want to see the near death experience that Cure was have, going to have there. Nobody should watch somebody die to the chickens. That was a fantastic outplay from Clam Spikle, Sparkle, Holy Carp, and Farm Logic there. Just everyone's just there to make sure that that play goes down. And uh, Holy Carp got bounced house. He was the one that was in mid lane, and he ended up down by the Dragon Pit after the Grog assault. So he got bounced around quite a bit there. As we see Ocean Rift coming in, no Rengars in this game to take advantage of it. But you know. It's some some people say it's the cal most calming rift out of these new ones. Very tranquil, beautiful. Yeah, I, I may say as a heel comes on out. <laughs> Until spell book is a magical thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like the original one the best. That was fun taking on Vlad and Malzahar and just uh, having all the cooldown and stuff. Did not want to mess with that. Used his ult. Yeah. Drank the potion. Drink the potion, and now we're getting, uh, oh, Chutty look, is drinking something all right. He's going to find himself in a world of pain. He's trying to use that Vanguard as he's trying to dash on around and lay out the damage, trade it on back. And he got the mid laners with the supports, and you guys say definitely ended Spartans. up favoring him. That's a flash body slam to come on out. The explosive cast comes on in, but knocks him to the wayside. So it's going to be a trade of one for one mid laner for mid laner. Yeah, uh, but it's not done yet. Clam, Clam, Clam is looking for more. Not going to be able to get more. He does get the axes there. Say, hey, back off my tower. He's going to be able to get that back off there. And right now, it is a 2K differential in favor of Purdue University. Yeah, and Zeta could have made that way better if he had aimed his cast where he definitely wanted it to send Holy Carp back out from under the tower. Uh, so that way Chuck wouldn't have had to take that tower shot or would have been able to get away from the next tower shot that came in. So a little bit of a misplay there. Definitely not what you want to see from Zeta after his game two performance. He really wants to, to have a good game and make things happen this time. Zero one and one doing, doing better than he did last game, but just those little mistakes like that can wear on a player's mental game because you know, you see, you foresee a play in your head and you go for it and it doesn't happen that way and you get mad at yourself. Uh, Holy is in a tricky spot here. He's going to find himself getting charmed on up. Is Holy Cart. He's going to be able to back on out of the situation. Only down to half HP. Not going to be able to get anything else. Shutty does not have any ultimate abilities. And it's going to be reinforcement oh, to hook. pick it up. But Flaw Logic, the god of hooks, is going to be able to pick up Chuck T. And Holy Cart will secure that kill right away. I was just going to say, the support's been mid for so long. I don't think we've seen an AD carry on the directed camera in like five minutes. Because they've just been mid fighting over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's just A-Ram, baby. That's how we do it over in NA. Zeta uh, is going to find hey, himself. Hey, there's the AD carries. They still exist. That's yeah, good uh, yeah they, they still exist. Actually, fun fact, um, I was talking about the 2K deficit earlier, uh, which is now a 3K. But earlier, the gold was 1K lead in favor of Olaf and 1K lead in favor of the Lucian. Just fun fact. More you know. Zeta, finding out the more you know, Flawed Logic is inside oh, of this. Oh, no, stuff. Zeta. Uh, Zeta, you don't want to go that way, buddy. Here, let me show you back to the Fountain, the Express route. They're going to help you out. They are going to be able to pick up that kill. And Bishop picks himself up his second kill of the game. They just pick on poor Zeta, man. They found him out. They TP'd on him, man. Yeah, I mean, Flawed Logic was lying in wait, waiting for it, but here's oh, Call of the Forge God. Oh, Call of the Forge God. He's going to be able it. to connect it and get that hit onto him. Chut T, not going to be able to follow up and get that kill onto Clam Sparkle like he wanted to. Now, Harold's been summoned into the mid lane, and it's going to be a free mid tower as the fighting's going down in the bot lane, but nobody able to get onto anything, and this is why you pick Lucian. To have these mobile, just very strong plays, and... Nasta timing his way to get out of that adhesive just perfectly. 
Oh, oh. stop the recall. Bishop in a bad spot. Gonna be able to dash yeah. on out of there. That's the death charge. Fedex is gonna be able to come on in. Is it is Fred that is taking a lot of damage. Not quite under tower, just on the edge. So not gonna be able to turn this into a killing situation. But now Bishop dropped down very low with almost no mana. What is going to be the option they resort to? It looks like Clam Sparkle is going to be the reinforcements that they need. Here comes Greg as he's running on in. Zeta's going to be able to body slam on in. He's going to find himself getting dropped down so very low. That's Clam Sparkle's going to be able to pick it up. Now, Fred, wow. you're going to get taken out. He has a tower to assist him. And Clam Sparkle in the right place at the right time, exactly where he needs to be. Yeah, and you saw Cure use the quickness there. I don't think he charmed anybody. He didn't hit Olaf. Nautilus stopped. Lucian dashed away. Nautilus rooted him in place. He never touched him. He actually didn't get to charm anyone. And Fred and Zeta get taken out. And Clam Sparkle is just having himself a game on the Viking. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for Cure, very uh, charming fellow, I'm sure. But his charms were not working for him in that scenario. Couldn't talk himself out of that. And now his team find themselves in a growing deficit right now as. Purdue, you got to think, if you're Purdue's players right now, you're feeling very comfortable with the lead you've amassed when you have a 5-0 into Olaf, and you're just on. It's just smacking around Neo. That is an exhausting <laughs> use. You, you know, you got, sometimes you got to lay it on out. Knockup coming on to Nasta. He's got he's going to be able to flash on out of that situation. It's going to be A-OK. -okay. But now this does pull the trigger yet again on the other side of the map. You're going to send all these resources? Fine, we'll take yeah. ourselves another Drake. I was going to say, this reminds me of last game when they got the Baron, that they send people top, and he's just going to get himself an objective oh, out of it. Call, call the Forge God. God. Came on out. Bishop's laying out the damage. They have a Whoa. lot going in there. They're going to be able to get one there for sure. Bishop's going to be able to pick that up. Now it's Chuck T versus the AD carry, but Bishop got two guns, two shots, and they just do too much damage. Bishop laying out the heat now. And Neo Restoration was so lucky to get out of there alive. So lucky that his team actually blocked the culling for him, allowing him to get on out. But for that one tower, they lose another. They lost that Drake. They're losing their lives. And they might be losing this series if things continue this way. If they can't find a way to stop it, it'll end up being a clean sweep. Mm -hmm. It could possibly be. And it feels weird calling it a clean sweep, seeing how the first game was where it was just this huge lead across just accrued by maelstrom and now we're looking at this and purdue ever since that the momentum feels like it's been at their side maelstrom they're desperately looking for a way to kind of disrupt this momentum that they have and they might find it right here bishop is all alone in the side lane pulling that old school double lift strat you're over it stand it split push in the lane you shall be punished you shall be judged bishop Whoa. wait he might actually get a kill almost there but not so much zeta gonna be able to pick that up and that is a big shutdown to be able to pick on up and that's exactly what you want on the Gragas, because the way Gragas has to build since they changed his W damage reduction to have more of an AP scaling and less base, um, you, you need to build that AP on him, which makes him squishy. I remember the days when you'd build full tank Gragas and just chill with that extra little bit of damage reduction. But now you have to build the Zanyas, you have to build some AP behind it, otherwise you know, you're not really getting any use out of it. So it's a double-edged sword. It lets him do some damage, but it also lets him get caught out and destroyed if he gets caught up, especially by someone like the Olaf. Ah, uh, well, now Chut T, it's his turn to be caught on out. It's the Olaf that's here, and it's going to be laying out the damage. It's completely unforgiving. That true damage brought down by those axes. No, nothing. Oh, my lord. Say a prayer. I would like everybody to please press F on your keyboards because... Zeta is not allowed to play the game, apparently, because Sindra just deleted him off of the map. Ow! Yeah, Didn't even was... give him a chance to say a prayer, man. That was hurtful. That was just a ton of damage. Just the Q and E alone almost one-shot him. You throw down that Q and get that ult for that five orb ultimate, it's a lot of damage and it's pretty disgusting. Cure popping the stanky leg on him, showing him what's up. He's, I believe in the last game, he turned around and said, better support loses. I think that he was the one that said that in the last game. <laughs> have to see. Maybe that stinky leg is him just showing off some of that swagger still. He's, he hasn't lost it. He hasn't lost that on hope. He's got his boo thing, Fred, over on the side. And Bishop still split pushing. He's going to get stunned on up. But does have backup this time. 
And it is a, uh, a very strong man, Olaf, indeed. Kira's going to find himself getting caught out now. He's going to jump on away, but that depth charge follows you wherever you may go. And he oh, is man. forsaken. Clam Sparkle is godlike, picking that up. Nice three-man stun to come on out. Now it's Neo Restoration and Zeta trying to tackle on this Orin. He is a thick boy. He is a big boy. He's going to oh. hit that call of the Forge God all the same. Get the knock up. He is going to make sure they stay there for a long time. Is it going to be for a good time now? Neo Restoration, he's trying to chase, but he is legendary. When you look over at Clam Sparkle, so Ragnaros is going to go ahead and jump on in. That is a double kill. Is Clam Sparkle just putting on a one-man show? We're here to find out. That shows you what Olaf can accomplish when he gets rolling early. It extends his relevancy way far later into the game. You see he's got the warrior and the black cleaver. I imagine he's probably going to build a guardian angel next just to protect that shutdown. So he's at 700 gold now. It'll soon be 1,000 the way he's been playing, and he wants to protect that and not give that gold over to someone because if you look at these teams on paper... Maelstrom's team comp will outscale Zaya and Irelia and Singe will be end up doing more like raw DPS mm -hmm. than Maelstrom's team or than uh, Purdue's team, excuse me. But, you know, the way it's going right now, they, they got some ground to make up. Yeah, especially when you look at a team like Purdue, they have so much initiation built into their comp. They have so many tools to actually support an Olaf. This is the trap. You were talking about how Lucian can be a trap. I find Olaf to be a trap if you don't put a comp that is able to be the supporting cast because Olaf is not your pet character to start every single thing off. You need somebody to support him and they've got the supporting at casted and look at this already. Lanasa is here to be that supporting at. Neo is going to find himself getting taken out. Zeta, oh, you do not want to be there. Sure, you don't want to be there. Nobody wants to be there right now. You guys want to all just get out of there. Cure is going to be caught on out. That's damage oh, being put man. out and Cure getting taken on out. This is not looking good right now for Maelstrom. Yeah, and Nasty even throws out the clarity just to top off the mana of everyone on the way by as they go on for this next Drake here. That's... Oof. Zeta's Wait. around, though. He's looking for a He's steal, looking but the for it. Uh, it, it, It's oh, way full He flashed, help. He flashed oh. into the bush that had a control ward into it and that is not going to work out that's not going to be the play you want to make that's going to be an ocean dragon secured there and uh it's like i said maelstrom looking very desperate at this current point in time definitely and maybe a bit of tilt setting in because that play from zeta definitely seemed like a tilt oh, play there bishop just laid a heaping amount of oh, damage on like, fred uh, if he actually just held on to that feather storm for a little bit longer he was dead that is crazy it feels like preventative <laughs> measures are just not being taken here as well and uh man the stun can't really prevent that all too well. Chutti going to find himself in a bad spot. He is the sole defender of this inhibitor tower. And he is looking in a situation where he's like, there's a 10-0 Olaf here. I don't know what you want me to do. Jeff Charge is going to be able to come out. They're looking to pull the trigger onto this. They're going to get the knockup onto the bad side, but they're only going to hit a Ragnarok Olaf. So it's not going to make any sense there. That's going to be one. That's going to be two. That's going to be three. That's going to be taken on out from the side of Maelstrom. Neo Restoration just looking to poison him on down. Yeah, Shut down goal going on over. Neo looking to have his pop off moment he's got that leon trees right now he is burning fire right now as he's just looking to kite these mini waves but i don't think they care about any of this orange just trying to stop him neo needs well, to get into a situation minions. to get out of this spot then not gonna find himself getting out though he's going the ocean to die soul. look how much oh. healing comes out of that ocean soul just look at him smacking these wolves healing right on up it's crazy it's just disgusting amount of heal. <laughs> <laughs> like, right, I'm out of here later. I gotta say, for style points, Cure definitely. Uh... <laughs> I just want to say how in that fight, Cure went in towards uh, Bishop and Clam Sparkle, and he was like full health when he jumped in, and he just straight died. <laughs> Well, it is like funny. as soon as soon as his charm wore off, he got like literally one shot by Bishop and Clam Sparkle. Clam Sparkle ran to like, the charm, he was so it was like he wasn't. <laughs> it was like he, the only person that got hit by the knockout was Clam Sparkle, and he was riding rot. So it was like, mm, that's a shame. <laughs> Bishop's been so good on being able to dash out of every single bit of DCC that Cures wanted to put out. 
And you really, uh, it's been a team effort. Everybody on this team, Flop Logic, been killer oh, on Fred. the hooks. Oh, Fred. Oh, oh no. he knows. Yeah, he there's knows nothing, there's no, nothing to call there as he was just asking for a moment of silence. Cure. Next on the list, maybe. Doesn't get knocked up, so he'll be safe for right now. Key moment now. Because he is still in the danger zone being over this tower. It is a Whoa! <laughs> stick flash coming on out from Flawed Logic. They might be looking for a fight to end off this game. Inhibitor is down in the mid lane. Inhibitor minions are going to be looking to come on in. And Clam Sparkle is looking to lead the way for his team here. This could be a scary spot. Here we go. The charm going to be able to connect. It's going to be able to hit onto two. That's going to be a huge explosive cast. Is it going to be enough damage? Going to be able to come on out as Gragas is going to find himself going ahead and falling down. Chuck T's in the backside, but is it going to be enough? He picks up one, but he's going to find himself going down. It is only Fred. What can Fred do? Looks like Fred's option is going to be to stay into the fountain. He is not going to jump on in. The calling is oh. enough. He just gets glacked away, and that is an ace. Whether you move, whether you choose to play, they will take your life all the same. And Purdue, they're going to be heading to the finals of the UCL looking stronger than ever. Yeah, Fred didn't even move off the fountain there in that last fight. Once he respawned partway through, he, he knew it was over. And Purdue, once they turned on in the middle of game number one, they did not let up on the gas, blowing right on through Maelstrom, paving their road to the finals, making it happen, and very strong performances out of Bishop and Clam Sparkle. I mean, the whole team popped off really hard. Like, Flawed Logic, this game was literally everywhere where Clam Sparkle was. They locked him down. They put him in the body bags. They took him down to the cemetery and gave him to the Undertaker. It was all over. Yeah, honestly, was just so freaking clean from them in Game 2 and Game 3. Lots of different things that came on out that they were making sure they were good on. Uh, like you said, every member needs a shout-out, right? Flawed Logic had an absolutely beautiful Morgana game, Game 2, and was a just a hooking king in Game 3, landing all sorts of hooks and was absolutely fearless. Bishop putting out huge performance in Game 2 and 3, yet again, uh, he was able to just dash around and dodge everything on the Kaisa and Lucian. Clam Sparkle, Game 2 and Game 3 yet again. Just absolutely popping off on the Graves and the Olaf. Nasta, consistently the solid rock inside this team as the sponge that they needed and was the supporting cast that made every single member of this team shine. And Holy Carp, just showing off mechanics all series long, his... Game score doesn't show it that much in game three, but hey, your mechanics can't really talk too much about them when all your mechanics are is pressing R at that point, but <laughs> <laughs> you just make sure there's enough orbs around when you press R, somebody dies. <laughs> yeah, overall, fantastic stuff from the guys from Purdue. Very well played this series, and you know... Earlier, we were talking about just giving Holy Carp MVP, but after Clam Sparkle's Game 3, and after what he did in Game 2 as well, it is tough, but I'm going to have to vote for Clam Sparkle there. He took this Game 3, and he slammed the door shut onto Maelstrom here. Um, once again, shout out to Holy Carp for his performances in Game 1 and 2, and to Bishop. He played very well as well. And, you know, like we said, everyone on this team played really well, but I think the MVP has to go to Clam Sparkle. He he showed up and really made the jungle his own. Aside, you know, game one, he wasn't, he didn't have a fantastic game one, but he was able to put that behind him, come out game two and three, and just have dominating performances over and over again. And that's what you want your MVP to do. You want them to take adversity and say, pfft whatever and ignore it and just keep on going and truck on through and he did that mm -hmm. yeah clam sparkle just put so much pressure out game two game three and even in game one we have to highlight the fact that even though he was so far behind on the leeson he still did make some things happen he knew that his role changed to i need to kick the oriana out of the fight i need to do this i need to do that i i die immediately and I let them waste everything on me, and that's fine. My team is able to win. So game one, sacrificial lamb. Game two, game three, he sacrificed the enemy team. So it was a fantastic time there. And ladies and gentlemen, it just 
absolutely fantastic. I want to give a shout out to everybody who came out and watched today. I know this wasn't the normal shine and polish that we usually have here over at Upsurge. Uh, but I appreciate every single one of you for coming on out and joining us for the ride and having a good time with us when we had the hottest, the freshest of contendies here. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to tune in tomorrow as UPL will come in with all the shine and uh, 1080, uh, 60 FPS uh, quality stream <laughs> that you could possibly handle. And uh, yeah, we will catch you guys on the flip side. Have yourselves a great night. Adios.